I'm Brandon Robertson, and I just wanted to take a second and come and talk to you a little bit about atonement theories. And you might be wondering, what in the world, why would anyone want to make a YouTube video about atonement theories? And I promise this won't be long. But the reason I just wanted to quickly comment about this is because I think that atonement theories are one of the biggest things that divide evangelicals today. And what I mean is that within evangelical Christianity, there are typically um, two views that people like to fall on with atonement. One view is called sub, uh, penal substitutionary atonement, and the other one has many different names, so it does penal substitutionary, but the other view is called the cosmic view, or the Christus Victor view. And penal substitutionary atonement is basically the idea that Jesus died to redeem sins and forgive sins of individual believers. So that Jesus' primary mission and his primary purpose was to come die on the cross to forgive individual sins. And people who agree and preach penal substitutionary atonement agree and preach that the most important aspect of Christian life is personal relationship with God. Um, finding forgiveness and reconciliation to God through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. And so, these people will mostly spend time focusing on cross-centered preaching, and they will tend to be conservative, they will tend to be reformed, um, and they'll tend to really love Paul, actually because Paul talks a lot about the cross. The other view is the cosmic gospel or Christus Victor, and that view tends to focus more on the life of Christ. Um, the incarnation, the birth, the life, the teachings, and the resurrection of Christ, and they tend to not so much focus on the cross. And these people, I tend to be on the more progressive, um, and some would even call them liberal evangelical, and they tend to focus on um, red-letter Christianity, if you will, so living like Christ, um, incarnational ministry, so living and being Christ to the world around you. And it's not so much about personal relationship with Christ, but more about being the p person and presence of Christ on this earth. And these people will also talk a lot about the kingdom of God and seeing God's kingdom come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And they believe that the primary uh, reason that Jesus came to the earth was to give us an example and to give victory over the powers of injustice and evil and darkness in the world. And that's not to say that these people don't talk at all about the cross. And most of them would say that there is some importance to personal faith. And on the other side, it's not to say all conservatives who believe in penal substitutionary atonement uh, don't believe that we should be doing acts of social justice. They do. But what I'm finding, and what I think a lot of people are finding, this is not new to me at all, and what I think the historical Christian message is, is a middle view. Is a view that accepts fully and believes fully in penal substitutionary atonement, believing that Christ came and on the cross he died to forgive us of our sins and to reconcile us into individual personal relationships with God, but also accepting the cosmic view that he also came and he lived and he was born and he gave us an example and he gave us victory over injustice and he called us to build a kingdom, that the gospel encompasses both of these views, that we don't need to be cross-centered people, nor do we need to be Christ-teaching-centered people, but we need to be both. We need to be the story of Christ-centered people. We need to be gospel-centered, really, the whole story of Jesus, from prophesying of him in the Old Testament, to his incarnation, to his birth, his life, his teaching, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and his coming again, that we need to really focus on all of this, because until we focus on all of it, we're going to be 
committing a sin of reductionism. We're going to be reducing the gospel down to either a personal relationship or moralistic deism, doing good things, uh, building God's kingdom, but not emphasizing the need for personal salvation and reconciliation through the blood of Christ. And recently, I've been leaning towards the cosmic view of the gospel. Before that, I was a strong proponent of penal substitutionary atonement, and I spent lots of time. Um, I even found it an evangelistic group that went on the streets of Baltimore City and preached to people, Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins. And like I said recently, I switched over and have been more very involved in red letter Christianity, if you will. But there's a problem I've discovered with both, is that I'm missing the gospel. I'm missing the fullness of the gospel. And uh, this revelation really came to me um, as I was reading Matt Chandler's new book called The Explicit Gospel, uh, N.T. Wright's works, and talking to N.T. Wright a little bit, and Scott McKnight's book, The King Jesus Gospel. All of these books are fantastic, and what's amazing is that they're written from people, uh, Scott McKnight, who was more on the red-letter Christianity side of things, Matt Chandler, who was more on the penal substitutionary side of things, and N.T. Wright, who's kind of been in the middle the whole time, it's written from these people who are from the extremes, who are coming to the realization that the extremes is not where the gospel is, that's not where the fullness of truth is. And Matt Chandler, I just got done reading his book literally about ten minutes ago, The Explicit Gospel, he says at the end of it that we need to realize there needs to be this middle ground, this middle balance, the reformed missional view, the progressive reformed view, which is that, yes, the gospel is believe in Jesus Christ and your sins will be forgiven, but also that the gospel is Christ has called us to be about his kingdom, about works of justice, that both are necessary, and it cannot be one or the other. We cannot commit the sin of reductionism. The gospel encapsulates it all. Jesus Christ encapsulates it all. Church history has traditionally said that yes, Christians need to be about building God's kingdom, and that Christ did bring victory over the injustices over the whole universe, but also Christ provides forgiveness and propitiation for individual sins, and the gospel is both. It's not one or the other. We need to embrace both. And I know this, so some of you might not sound like some amazing liberating truth, but to me it is. Because being somebody who's gone back and forth and waffled between the two, saying that the gospel is only penal substitutionary atonement, that the idea that God saves us from our sins, or the gospel was only uh, Christus victor, that Christ gave victory over injustices and evil and caused us to build a kingdom, to me, finding out that it's the middle ground is rejuvenating, refreshing, and liberating. That we need to be about Christ and Him crucified, but also Christ and Him risen again, birthing a new kingdom, and doing acts of justice, and loving the poor and the widow. And so, um, I would definitely recommend that any Christian who's interested in this at all would pick up Matt Chandler's new book, The Explicit Gospel, pick up Scott McKnight's newer book, the King Jesus Gospel, and do a lot of reading of N.T. Wright, and um, I think you'll really come to this view that you need to be about both, and that we need to be preaching in our churches Christ and Him crucified, and also Christ coming and calling us to be about justice and mercy and mission. And so I just wanted to leave you with that. Um, I hope there's some nugget of wisdom that you could walk away with from that. And yeah, that's about it. So, I'm Brandon Robertson. Check out more of my stuff at brandonrobertson.com. And um, grace and peace to you all, in the name of Jesus Christ. Goodbye.